in FI? Ah, oh, find a partner. <laughs> so find a partner. That's it. We're going to explore a little bit in FI. Mm. Yeah, I suggested that people who know they're really uncomfortable um, exploring get a table. No, she hasn't gone home. Hmm. Yeah, she'll be back. She's just making a phone call. So everyone has a partner. Yes, yes. Okay, so all stand up. Mm. All go for a walk. Mm. And we were talking yesterday before Lisa did that beautiful lesson yesterday about what do you look for when you're walking? And again, it's a, a light intention that you're looking for something. And how are you at beginning to look, not just gathering information, not just, ah, I'm looking at the weight on my feet, but beginning to look bigger. How does that influence where the weight is on my feet on how my pelvis moves? Does that influence my breathing? So is there some relationship between where my breathing is, where the weight is on my feet, how my pelvis is moving? <laughs> Are there some directions that I could move more easily in than others? And then, of course, you can always use that general qualitative sense of how light do I feel? Would it be easy for me to walk, change my speed here, the way I'm walking at the moment? So is there a way I'm walking at the moment that feels like it's more a saunter along the beach? <laughs> Compared to I've got to get somewhere and I'm running late. <sighs> and then just come to standing for a moment. Get a sense where your eyes would rest. Don't make them go anywhere. But just where would they rest at the moment? Would your eyes be looking a little down or up? You know, I find it really fascinating when I was watching a little bit of the Commonwealth Games. I've got to try this out now. All the gymnasts look down when they're on the balance beam. Hmm. What does that afford them? Why do they look down? So how do you feel? your weight distribution, and if you were going to turn just a little, just a little, the beginning, left and right, where would you start turning from? Where would you start to, what level of your spine would you start turning from at the moment? If you were going to turn to go a little bit to the right, not necessarily look, but you're going to, that's where you're going to head off to. Where would you start turning from? Great. So find a place on the floor for you and your partner. Decide who's going to lie down first. I 
know once you've decided who's going to lie down first, the person lying, just get a sense, do they look comfortable here? Do they look comfortable? Do they look like maybe it would be useful to have something under their head? Maybe they've already chosen to have something under their head. Do their legs look like they're in a light position? If you can, as much as you can, try not to have to put anything under their legs for this. If you can. It's a little bit more about standing that we're, we're doing here. And then you've done this before. Where's their head in relationship to their torso? So where does their head sit in relationship to the top of their sternum, to their pubic bone, to their feet? So does their head look like it's in the middle? Or does it look like they're a little bit more over one leg than another at the moment. And where do you get a sense, and I know this is difficult because people will probably change it as soon as I say this, where do you get a sense their eyes would be looking as they're lying? Do you think they'd be looking down a bit? Or up? Or maybe a little left or right. <laughs> and then begin to feel that you could get beside them and begin to feel you're going to help them sense what parts of them touch the floor and what parts are away from the floor. So you're going to use your hand for both of you to feel does one, and you can start at the neck, you could start at the legs. Often with a scan doing this, we often start at the feet, but wherever you want to. Yeah, what's the space behind the ankles? So you're feeling for the spaces. You're feeling for the differences between the left and right. So you're not moving them yet. No, you're just doing the spaces underneath at the moment. Getting a sense of... What part, where do they touch the ground? And you're doing it in a way that you're helping to inform them. It's not simply your inquiry. So it's not just about you being able to feel it, but there's something in the way you're relating to them that you're helping them to listen to themselves a little more. So you really get this idea, it's a person on the table that I'm having a conversation with. So you're simply sensing 
contact with the ground, not trying to change anything, not trying to do anything. Just helping them to listen, helping them to sense. So as I said, you're not trying to support it, to help it to let go or do anything. But simply, where are the spaces? And what are you sensing in yourself as you do this? How much of you are you including in your image as you do this with them? So you're thinking about your comfort, your ease. So you're building up a picture both for them and for you about if there was a pressure sensor under them. Where are the bits that would be pressing a little harder? Where are the bits that would be further away? And when you finish that process, when you feel you've been through them, legs, arms, torso, head, all along the back of them, just pause and sit beside them so I know when we can move on. And the person who's lying there, if your partner has finished that little exploration, how has that influenced you? Is there something that's been brought more to your attention by that?
Okay, so wherever you are at the moment, we'll leave it and come to their head. So come to the person's head and find a position for yourself. This is the person who's doing. What are you looking for? What are you looking for in yourself that tells you in a, you're in a position that you're ready to start to investigate something? So what are some of the things some of you are looking for? Let's hear. Sorry? So what does balance mean for you? So you can feel you can shift your weight a little bit. Yeah, so you're feeling balanced. You've got a little bit of reversibility. Yeah. What are some other things? Sorry. And what does grounded mean? Yeah. So you feel like you're going into the ground a little bit, as if there's a, yeah, going into the ground a little bit. You're really using it. Now, what other things? Freedom, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. So for you, it's about I could initiate the movement from my pelvis and feel the rest of me follow, yeah? What does that mean? How do you know you're comfortable? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> no pain's good, but what are you going to do if you're working and you've got some pain? What else could you pay attention to? <laughs> You'll all be doing it one day, believe me. See what happens. That's the nice thing when you've got pain and you've still got enough adaptability and use of your system that you can work with it. That's what we're trying to teach people who have got pain. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else besides no pain? Hannah. That's a nice one. So that's it. put an extra bit onto it, being able to move so that I'm not going to restrict the other person. So bringing it to a little bit bigger picture. Yeah, anything else? And what are you looking for in your breathing? No, what about, no, you. <laughs> that's a good first place to start. So what would be some of the things you could look for for breathing that would be more positives that would tell you, yeah, so that you could keep an easy rhythm maybe in your breathing? Mm -hmm. Or that your breathing could be sort of uninterrupted from what you're doing? Anything else people look for? So this is an ongoing inquiry. No, yeah. but this is what we're trying to get as Feldenkrais practitioners, this ability to keep returning to what do I direct my attention to? Because what you understand how to direct attention to, you can show the other person. Yeah. And just to think, what are my strengths? What are the things that I can make more distinctions about? Okay, so now if you were going to Think about where you felt the weight on the back of their head and you were going to roll their head a little bit. Are you now in a position that you feel you can roll a little bit easily? So now we've put a movement in that you're going to, going to explore. Is that, does that change a little bit? So a lot of you are shifting your weight what about your necks? Is your head free to turn a little bit left and right? Or are you doing it all through your pelvis? <laughs> no. 
So if you were going to roll someone's head a little left and right, how would you do that on yourself? And you don't have to do it, but what would you be looking for in yourself if you were going to do this movement on them? So just take a moment and just think about if someone had their hand on my forehead or if I had my hand on my forehead, what would I be looking for? What questions would I be asking myself about how I would be rolling my head? Mm -hmm. So what are the questions? What's your inquiry? It makes such a difference usually to our exploration if we've got something to begin to look for. For many of us to go, I'm rolling the head. So, <laughs> I'm rolling. That's a nice one. That's what we're going to do. How do you follow where the ground is? So you're going to roll the head, feeling for where the ground is at the back of the head. So that's your intention. I'm rolling the head a little left, a little right, feeling for where they're ready to shift their weight across the back of their head. So questions you could be asking is, is my hand in the best position to do that? How much pressure do I use? Can I stay in a small, this is going back to Anna's idea, can I stay in a small range where I know I'm not going to bias the movement too much? So I just start off very small. Can I, by having a clear question that I'm asking them, which is how do you roll your head left and right relative to where your weight is on the ground, can they feel, I mean, we've already told them what the question is, but can they feel that that's a question you're asking? It's not just a question of how do you roll your head left and right, they can get a sense that you're asking for a relationship here. So there's a clarity in what you're asking them. And I'm interested, obviously, in the trajectory. Does the trajectory change? Does the ease change? And as soon as I feel a difference in quality, I go back. But I'm really trying to refine this question to where it's really, really easy. And then maybe the second question you could be asking as you're rolling the head and shifting their weight is where do I feel that that's rolling? What part of their spine is doing this movement? Can I get a sense as I do this, if I had to sort of pinpoint a little bit, what part of them first started to move in response to this. So it's this ability to ask questions that lets us make more distinctions. And leave it. Wherever you are, leave it. Take your hands away and let them integrate that a little bit.
let's let them have a little bit of time to make some sense of that. So now can you go down to their feet? And you were feeling there for where the gaps were. So you, and you can probably see as well, where the weight is around their heels. What part of them is touching the ground? What part is, and how is that? Is, are they more rolled out? Are they more rolled in? Does one foot look different to the other? And then you're going to find, again, a way to hold their foot where you're going to, again, explore rolling their foot a little bit to the left and the right, again, across the part of the ground that they're making contact with. And again, before you do it, could you think what questions would you be asking yourself if you were doing this? If you were doing this on yourself in sitting, you can feel where the weight is on your feet. If you were going to be just shifting the weight a little bit about across whatever surface of your foot is currently taking the weight, what would you be interested in? What's the speed? Don't do it yet. Feel it on yourself. Elizabeth, feel it on yourself. What's the speed that you would do it? And what would be your inquiry? What would you be interested in? And then could you begin to do it on them, on your partner? So how are you going to... Hold their foot that's going to help them through your hands to sense how they shift the weight across their heel. Again, you're staying within where it's very easy, reversible. So where's the trajectory that you have to follow on their foot to roll it across the heel? And it might be a very, very small movement, and that's absolutely fine. So don't try and make it happen. And feel how you have to be feeling ground in yourself to do this. Do you have your ground? And you do one foot, you do the other foot, and then you leave it. And again, you give them a moment to make sense of it. And again, how do you 
find that place where you're not trying to change anything in them. You're not trying to make parts come along. You're simply very lightly helping them to listen to what they can do. And when you've finished that, go back and roll their head again. See if it made any difference. How are they generalising? Are they beginning to be able to generalise this idea of finding an easy way to shift their weight? So that you don't have to do the work for them. You're just clarifying what they already do. <laughs> and you're seeing how do they generalise? How do they make sense of that information? And just once or twice is plenty and leave it. So again, you're not trying to change anything. You're just saying, does anything feel different? Okay. This time, go to their pelvis. And again, you've already felt for where the spaces are, are under the pelvis. So now we're going to roll their pelvis a little left and right. So if you want to, again, just take a moment to really feel where's the weight. It might have changed a little bit after what we've just done. And you're really getting a sense of where do I need to have them? Where do I need to have my hands? That for this person, it's going to help them to shift their weight a little left and right. It might not be perfectly left and right. It might be right and down or left and up. Then you put your hands on their pelvis and you begin to explore this again. Quality. And what's the question if someone had their hands on your pelvis? What questions would be interesting to ask? <laughs> Is the trajectory different one side to the other? I'm really listening, feeling for where their weight's going and just trying to follow where their weight is. So it is left and right, but as I said, it can be lots of different trajectories left and right. And just really notice as you're doing this, is it something you're just doing with your hands? Or are your hands connected to your pelvis? Are your hands connected to the ground? So again, we're just feeding in information here. I'm not trying to change anything. Feeding in information. This is where you like to shift your weight to. Leave that.
and go back again to the head. Notice has anything changed? Does the head go maybe on a different trajectory now? Maybe there's something about where their head is sitting in relationship to the rest of them now or where their eyes would be looking. So what did you observe before you started rolling their head? And what, has anything changed maybe in where they're rolling their head from now? The level that they're rolling from? Okay, just once or twice is plenty. And now you're going to see where their weight is in their upper chest and begin to explore rolling their shoulders a little left and right. And again, what questions would you be asking yourself before you do this? What would you be interested in if you were doing this on yourself? And again, when you start to do the movement, do you think they can get a sense that the question you're asking is, how do you roll your shoulders left and right and feel how that changes your contact with the ground? Do you feel there's a clarity in the question you're asking them? From their shoulders, from their shoulders, from their shoulders. Doris, from her shoulders. And you're starting to really get the sense of what's their timing. Like not what's your timing, but are you starting to feel you're finding a timing that makes sense to them, to sense themselves? That there's a speed for them that makes the movement interesting? Leave that and go back down to their feet and see if anything changed in how they're rolling across the heels. Again, you might want to observe first. Do you see anything different in how their feet are lying or how their legs are lying? And now you're interested in. Does it feel different? Do I remember what it felt like before? You even might feel somehow that you'd that there's something in you saying, I think I could do both feet together. And I'm feeling, what is it if I do both feet together? Is it they would roll toward each other in a way or they would both want to roll in the same direction and then the other?
using the ground. And leave that. And then one final time going up to their head. And just take a moment to observe. Does anything look different? Does the, you don't have to feel it, but does the contact with the ground look like it's changed at all? Does their head look to be in a different position? I'm sort of clarifying this direction of right, left. Where are their eyes looking? Is their breathing changed? Hmm. And don't worry if the head's gone more off. It's doesn't it's not important. What you're looking for is how's this person making sense of this? Hmm? It's really easy for us to get caught up in it should be this or it should be that. So roll their head again when you're ready. And just see, how does it feel now? Minimum effort. And if they're doing a really big movement, maybe you want to give them a really small movement. What happens in their eyes? Leave it. Okay, so now both of you, can you find a way, an easy way to come up to standing and just see how this has influenced both of you. Hmm. So the person who was doing the movements, what's changed in your organisation from exploring that on someone else? And the person who's slowly coming up, again, what's changed? Where are your eyes looking at the moment? Is it different? So this is usually a movement, this turning around the axis that gives horizon much more. People will often get up and their heads will be much more on the horizon, their eyes will be on the horizon. So if you went now to very slowly turn, around to the right, what leads the movement? What's the first thing that starts? Have a walk, feel what's different. And then could you get together with two other people, but two other people who were doing the same role as you, so not your partner. So if you were doing the movement, get with two other people who were doing the movement. If you were lying, get together with two other people who were lying and just have a little chat about what was interesting about that for you. And if there's not exactly threes, you can have a four. <laughs> mm. 